This article right here is something definitely worth talking about. Just the title alone, like made my ears perk up. It says five signs that you will never become rich one day. It ain't happening. Basically, if you fall into some of the categories that are listed here and it, it sounds funny to say, but it's actually pretty serious. So let's let's just kind of work through these five, John, because I feel like this is I mean, it, it's it's accurate. Um, how do you know that you will never be rich? Number one, you have a victim. Let's go through it first. You have a victim mentality Two, saying money is not important to me. Three, you love to spend more money than you make. Four, you have a scarcity mindset. And five, you're obsessed with being the best in your business. You're not obsessed with being the best in your business. So let's let's break it on down here because I, I know the two that stood out to me what that I've they? struggled with. What's that? The struggle is you have a victim mentality. Okay. I hate to say a lot of these. Um, You just say that money is not important to me because I grew up with that. Like, oh, oh, I don't want to be a millionaire. You know, if you have a million dollars, I mean, that's just going to change who you are. And we don't need that. And rich people are like this and rich people are like that. And it's kind of like you negative your way out of you. You make something that's great. Sounds so terrible. Who would ever want that? There's right? a... Uh... A, a, an old Methodist minister in Texas, it says the most offensive word in the English language is they. Mm. And when you grow up with those, those people, people with that kind of money are them, yes. it, it, it creates this little false cocoon around, yeah. we aren't like that, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's a great recipe for sitting right where you are forever. Well, it, and it goes both ways because you can paint those people to be like these horrible people, like you know, just mean rich people or they're evil. Yeah. yeah. Greedy old rich people or which I also saw this growing up is they're just the people on the hill. Yeah. Like they're, they're sparkly and they're shiny perfect. and perfect. Yep. And they had all this opportunity and there, there must be like this special gleam about them and that's how they got it. And we're not those people, you know, yeah. we're not the people who invest we didn't get lucky yeah we didn't yeah. we don't we don't wear a suit and tie to work we don't carry a briefcase and so we don't invest and we don't build wealth and if we do we don't talk about it because i never heard about it <laughs> so that for sure and then the victim mentality of it, it, it and it goes hand in hand because it's like if only they would have done that then i could have had this mm. or if only they hadn't have done that i could have had this and at some point, you just got to leave that by the wayside and go, hey, that just was what it was. And now it's not about what happened. It's about what happens next. And I get to decide what happens next. Well, and I, I remember looking at, I mean, you had more. I remember looking at six figures of student loan debt. And my first thought was th what they did. Heck yeah. I signed my name to that paper. Did I fully know what I was getting into? No. I signed it, man, and I can sit there and stare at it and yell and scream yeah. at what they did, or I can get about solving the problem. Absolutely. I can get about solving the problem. And that's the hard part, right? Because the fact is, we do know that student loans and all that kind of stuff, we do know that situations can be predatory. We do know they that you can be people. done wrong, right? And it's not negating the fact that something happened was or was not wrong, right? Correct. Absolutely. But it's just, it takes some fortitude, man. To come in and be like, despite that, I may have played a role in this, especially when it comes to debt. And I've just developed this thought in my mind now where it's like, whatever it is that I'm complaining about, yapping about, whining about, there's probably something, Jade, that you can do to make it better instead of claiming it's all them or all that or, you know. I'm married, so you know I can always be like, "It's Sam Warshaw." No, Jade, you look at you too. And Everybody's participating. Yes, yeah. can't be yeah. the victim mentality, but changing that is so so hard. It's so so hard. Um, you love to spend more money than you make. I, we wouldn't have a show if it wasn't for that. <laughs> we all struggle with that. Oh man, um, yeah, I, that, that one kind of stands on itself. The one that stuck out to me was you have a scarcity mindset. And Ooh. that's one of those like Instagrammy buzzword things that I kind of roll my eyes at. Yeah. Until I met Dave, quite honestly, behind really? closed doors. Mm -hmm. And I've heard how people firsthand talk about the, who are buddies with Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. That he's so insanely generous behind closed doors mm -hmm. that the whole, the whole, 
pitch is there's so much more than enough for all of us. Yeah. And that's a true way that dude lives his life. With Dave, there's always so much more that opportunity than there is ever going to be people to do the work. And of so course. It's a spirit with which they live. And so if it's like, oh, we'll just take that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, man, that's expensive. I he he was buying something and I uh and the guy came in here and I, I said hey put one on for me because I want I want to buy one of those well he just put on Dave's tab and so I put some money by Dave's thing for it uh-huh and I had that money on my desk that same money I put he he put it on my desk and he's like <laughs> he's like dude there's more than enough there, there's more than enough yeah. but it, it, it's how you tip it's how you live and so this scarcity mindset if I don't get mine then someone's gonna get mine yeah that is a way to live a tiny shriveled up life and it's a miserable way of existing i've always um heard the phrase i heard this phrase when i was in college and i say it to this day as a reminder what god has for you is for you and it kind of whenever i feel that feeling of if i don't get to this in time it's gone or if i don't do this there's only a little bit left i love the way this says it it says believing that success is a pie with limited slices and i always have to remind myself no jade and for anybody listening, God has a special plan for you. It's not contingent upon whether other people do what they were supposed to do or if other people are successful or not. It's just you and your plan and you competing with yourself and you getting better than your former self. It's not every, you know what I mean? Like, don't get me wrong, we're all connected, but this idea that somebody can take something from me that was supposed to be mine, I don't believe that. I think that the only person that can hinder you is you and no one's going to steal. Well, my business would have grown if it wasn't for that guy over there. No, you, there was probably something you were supposed to do. Well, if it wasn't for, you know, student loans, I could have been rich by now. No, it's probably like I don't believe that somebody can steal like your purpose and your what's meant for you from you. I don't know. Is that controversial? No, no, no. I, 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 I just love the idea that. There's enough. There's enough. There's enough. There's enough. What's for you is for you, but you got to be the one to go out and get it. And the Look, last one is, um, I struggle with this one because I see the other side. I see the the mental health issue side of this thing. I'm, I'm going to be speaking at Entree Summit. It, there'll be 2,500, 3,000 business leaders. I see them struggle with this, but at the same time, it's the truth. Uh-huh. I don't know a way around it. You're not obsessed with being the best in your business. Okay. You, like... And I think the best in your business we have transposed to winning. Uh-huh. Like I have to win. And if your obsession was is with winning at all cost, you're going to find yourself banging on trash cans to cheat pitches, right? Like my mm. beloved Astros did. They <laughs> stopped trying to be excellent at everything and they started trying to win everything and you yeah. cut corners. But if you get obsessed with excellence yeah. and honoring the person who put gave you their money or their time and ask you to help solve a problem in their business – and you become obsessed with excellence, dude. And if you're not obsessed with you excellence, don't do business. Don't do business. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I mean, I got to say, I agree with this list. Looking at it, I've been all of the people on here at least once, <laughs> if not many, many times in my life. And yeah, me too. If you can get a hold of just a couple of these, you're on your way. You are well on your way. Um, I mean, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. What do you think, John? Don't be a victim. Make your money. If your money's not important to you, it's going to be important to somebody else. Don't spend more than you make. There's always more than enough. And be obsessive about excellence.